So this is the 2160 lecture nine, extended the Kalman filter and unscented the Kalman filter. Um, even though you have taken uh, some course and learned something about the Kalman filter, uh, but uh, not many of you have really uh, learned unscented Kalman filter. For instance, we really go to the nonlinear regime from uh, today. So, um, yeah, now let's say, you know, uh, take some example. Um, so far, we have been dealing with the all linear dynamical systems, right? <laughs> Both in you know, a continuous time and discrete time, all, you know, um, linear time varying systems. That's, that's the plant dynamics that we assumed. And however, practical systems are almost always, you know, um, nonlinear to some extent. Um, and then now, a vehicle is one example, and then this is related to the next uh, context-oriented uh, um, program, uh, project, uh, um, and uh, that's actually vehicle navigation. And uh, this is a simple, you know, you know planar kinematics. It turns out to be uh, nonlinear. So, you know, you have a vehicle, and a vehicle, you know, you know, position and orientation, you know, collectively it's called uh, the pose, uh, described uh, by you know capital X Y coordinates of some uh, target point in the vehicle, and its orientation you know um, measured from the plus X axis at the side, right? However, I know we also use the uh, B, you know coordinate systems, uh, basically uh, attached to um, the uh, vehicle. Um, um, you know, uh, the, you know, smaller x, y, and the coordinate the systems. It's called the vehicle coordinate system. So the little misleading thing is that the x, y, small x, y coordinates are also fixed to the space. But uh, at the instance shown, you know, x coordinate is aligned, small x coordinate is aligned with the vehicle to longitudinal direction. <clears throat> And uh, the next instance, so when actually the vehicle moves from this location, you know, um, it is no longer you know, uh, aligned, but you know, uh, you get the uh, new coordinate system X, Y out there. A little confusing, but I you know, um, you know, easy things is that, you know, we can actually describe the, you know, translational velocity of this vehicle in a VX that is actually along the X, the small X direction. And also, as you rotate, you know, left wheel and the right wheel with the different angular velocity omega L and omega R, B equals to a term, and that's actually, you know, um, a phi dot is actually um, angular velocity created by this. Now, with that, uh, you know, Vx, Vy can be written as a function of omega R, omega L. And the difference between the two is to give the phi and phi dot, right? But that's actually a view from a small x y coordinate. Now, viewed from capital X y coordinate, uh, here's the uh, you know place that the cosine sine comes in. The v x, uh, this velocity, its cosine component is to uh, you know generate the x directional velocity, capital X directional velocity, and the sine psi as to create the y directional velocity, right? So it's already, you know, nonlinear transforms is involved here. So uh, if you rewrite this, actually, you know, state equation turns out to be a nonlinear, it contains a sine, a cosine function. So that this is just a you know, simple example, but I know it turns out to be nonlinear. So in general, uh, we write the state equation x dot equals some nonlinear function f, which is the function of a uh, you know, state x and the input to u and the time t, and then actually um, you know process noise wt. Um, this uh, assumption on this you know um, process noise as well as the measurement noise remains the same. Uh, you know we, we take the same assumption as before. That's actually uh, you know um, uncorrelated uh, white. Uh, and you know, noise, and uh, you know, in this case, uh, sensor main sensor is sitting here at the lidar, and uh, that's a kind of a range finder, and attach it to uh, this particular point, uh, attach it to the vehicle, right? 
So viewed from the vehicle coordinates, you look at the, uh, some object detected over here. Now the LiDAR is basically a scan up, scan the laser light, you know, uh, in this direction. So it is, uh, and, uh, by nature, it is actually polar, polar coordinate. So again, the polar coordinates, you know, using R and the theta and X, Y coordinate, you know, transformation include the nonlinear functions, sine, cosine. So in general, we write the, um, in a measurement equation that to be a nonlinear function, H, X, and the T with the, the noise uh, measurement noise, V, uh, T. So this is just, you know, a simple example. So what we can do for this class of systems? So, you know, um, yeah, we introduced the three methods, uh, denialized the Kalman filter, extended the Kalman filter, and then unscented the Kalman filter, um, and applied it to uh, nonlinear dynamical systems, exotico F, X, U, T, W, T, and the Y equal measurement uh, equation, H, X, T, V, T. Okay, the dimension is basically the same one as before, okay? So let's start with the linearized Kalman filter. As, as names indicate, yeah, this is just a linearized uh, version. So it's not that complicated. Uh, first, the linearized nonlinear steady equations around the nominal trajectory. Well, what I mean by nominal trajectory is something a reference trajectory or a planned trajectory, a commanded trajectory, whatever you call it. So prior to executing some task, there's some, you know, trajectory that you planned, um, and then this is commanded to the systems that you are controlling. Um, so, you know, and that trajectory is denoted X star T, nominal trajectory. And this trajectory is executable in a sense that, you know, that satisfies the nonlinear and the equation without the, uh, uh, the um, um, you know, process noise, uh, which is actually mean zero and unpredictable. But I know predictable deterministic part, you know, X dot and X star, excuse me, you know, satisfied, you know, that, that dynamics. Okay, now let's consider a um, deviation from the, uh, the nominal trajectory delta X. So, you know, you know, the general X is X, X star plus uh, the delta X, right? And then uh, assuming that the, uh, this deviation is small, we can expect uh, some kind of feedback controls around uh, uh, the plant. So that is to bring the, keep the, uh, uh, the systems close to uh, this nominal trajectory. And whatever the mechanisms are uh, being used, you know, we assume delta X to be small. So we linearize the nonlinear state equations. So uh, I know it's originally in this form and X is now replaced by X star plus delta X and, uh, and uh, you know, the others remain the same. And we like to take the you know, Taylor expansion of the first order, Taylor, Taylor ex expansion, um, and uh, actually, uh, you know, um, and put the all higher order smaller quantities in here. So you get the uh, um, F X star evaluated the uh, you know, F at the X star, and then actually partial derivative of F with respect to X evaluated by at the X star, and then delta X and, and actually uh, process noise. Now, on uh, this one, it's just a standard uh, first order data expansion. However, you know, quite a few students got the trouble with this, you know, simple linearization. 99% of the reason is that uh, when you expand it this way, right, then they got stuck. And X dot is now actually, uh, you, know, um, you know, written as X star dot plus delta X dot, okay? That's uh, simple. Then uh, they got stuck. But don't forget that the, this X star is the one, it's not the arbitrary X star, but the X star is the one that satisfy, satisfies the original nonlinear um, deterministic part of the nonlinear equations. So the, this part is X star dot, and then X star dot, X star dot, both sides cancel out. 
So delta x dot equal partial derivatives times delta x and then you know, process noise part, right? So you know, once you evaluate this at this particular point, x, x star, then it, it, this becomes a Jacobian, so that's actually a, a matrix. So let's replace this matrix by f of t. Then this equation, you know, becomes just a standard uh, on the linear uh, time buying uh, uh, set equations. Um, but for, uh, from now on, we really care delta x. So um, delta x is now replaced by x. Um, and then the delta x dot, the, the x dot. Uh, so this is actually the uh, end result. This is nothing but uh, just a linear time borrowing, um, you know, systems uh, uh, state equations. Um, so um, um, the, we can apply the similar stuff to uh, measurement equations. The measurement equations are here too. We, uh, you know, linearize it around the x star, and then uh, this uh, derivatives is replaced by ht, and uh, you get to this equation, okay? So nonlinear set equations is now, um, you know, uh, transformed to, you know, um, this linear equations and output to two. Then now you finally, uh, you know, um, appreciate why when we study Kalman filter, both uh, you know um, discrete time and the continuous time. You know we insist that uh, the systems we're dealing with is actually linear time varying, not the time invariant systems. Well, the one big benefit is that when you actually linearize from nonlinear systems around some kind of a fixed trajectory, x star, for instance, um, you know the uh, linearized systems is still linear, but it's a you know, linear time bind. We have already obtained the Kalman filter for such linear time bind systems. So we can use exactly the same Kalman filter um, you know, to this actually uh, you know, um, linearized uh, you know, the systems too. So state of propagation update, uh, we you know, use the same equation because once we use an FT and AT, as actually a Jacobian as defined here, you know, same equation, and the common gain the same, and then in the, in the continuous time, we can use uh, this, you know, the cut the differential equation. In the case of a discrete, discrete time, um, we use a covariance propagation and the covariance update law, two of them right here. So this one is simple, okay? This one is simple, but now, you know, that is somewhat, uh, you know, limited. The linearized common filter is simple, but it performs poorly when the actual trajectory is significantly deviated from a nominal trajectory. That's quite uh, conceivable. Now, extended the common filter is just a simple idea, a simple extension to the, the linearized common filter, but it turns out to be a very effective. Well, this extended version of Kalman filter was invented during the Apollo mission time. So, in the back to the 1960s, and uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, space uh, vehicle trajectory dynamics is nonlinear. But I know uh, using the linear Kalman filter it turns out to be not effective. But this, uh, you know, extended Kalman filter did the job quite nicely. So two major ideas, uh, improvement to, to you know, um, linearize the common filter. Uh, you know, um, I know we go to uh, extended common filter, it's a two folds. One is that the Jacobian matrices are evaluated not at the nominal state, but at the estimated state, x star, uh, excuse me, x hat. So suppose this is the, uh, you know, and a time trajectory of x, okay? Nominal trajectory is going this way. And then uh, actually, you know, actual trajectory is a black one like this, right? And it's already uh, having uh, some significant uh, deviations. Now, you do not have to insist to uh, use the nominal trajectory to linearize your systems. 
Instead, uh, you have uh, some estimate of the situations and the state uh, x hat. Why not actually use uh, use um, using the estimated uh, state x hat to linearize the the Jacobian? Basically, evaluating the uh, Jacobian, linearizing it. So instead of using this, you know, evaluated at the x star, the nominal trajectory, but instead it is evaluated at the x hat, okay? Um, you know, uh, partial h, partial x is also evaluated at the x hat. This is the number one improvement. Number two improvement is, is a very simple idea, you know, you know, as shown here. So, you know, you know, linearize the Kalman filter. We basically use this, you know, state uh, uh, propagation and uh, state update the uh, law, right? So uh, Kalman gain KT is applied, uh, you know, actual measurement YT minus actually predicted uh, um, output, uh, you know, HX hat. Instead of using HX hat, because we know the original nonlinear function, why not actually create the y hat by evaluating this function at the x hat? You know, um, that is actually, you know, uh, that makes things much more accurate compared to this linearized one, so, right? So that, that's actually sitting here. Likewise, um, this part is, this part, the first term comes from state propagation, right? State propagation, state propagation. This too, you don't have to use the linearized form. Instead, you can use this nonlinear you know, function and evaluate this nonlinear function at the estimated state x hat, okay? Which is actually significant improvements to this. So these two uh, improvement uh, makes up the case of extended common filter. So um, yeah, this is the summary. So right hand side, and uh, we have a uh, you know update uh, the state estimate um, with the actual uh, measurement uh, sitting here you know and then actually expected uh, predicted the output is here and actually this is the deterministic predicted the state transition right so this is actually a exact exact nonlinear functions are used now these are uh, common gain k is actually you know provided on this side so you know kt is actually given by pth you know r right i know now uh, this p is basically coming from the ricatti differential equations and the this ricatti you know, differential equations uses the linearized state transition matrix f and the linearized output um you know matrix h which must be computed. And then that comes from here. These Jacobians are evaluated at x, x hat over here. So compared to the previous case, you know, um, this, you know, um, just a standard uh, Kalman filter, you know, we discuss that you know, this left hand side computation can be done um, offline because it doesn't use the actual measurement, right? However, in this case, can we do that? So, you know, this side, it's actually, it uses the measurement Y, you know, we assimilate the measurement Y, therefore, this must be computed in real time, online real time. But I know previously, this side of uh, computation, basically, uh, you know, um, in the discrete time, it is covariance update and covariance propagation, you know, can be computed without the use of any measurement. So this can be, this side of computation can be um, performed uh, prior to executing task uh, or offline, right? However, uh, this time an extended common filter, since these and F and the H are evaluated at the estimated state over here, Therefore, an estimated state is available only during the uh, execution, the real time. Therefore, this side of computation too must be done in real time. 
So, you know, computation, the Jacobian evaluations uh, at the estimated uh, value, and then have to solve this guy to provide the uh, P matrix, and then get the put together to, um, uh, to get the uh, Kalman gain, and then provide that one to this side. Okay, so that's extended Kalman filter. So um, just uh, make sure this point. Well, you know, um, covariance propagation and update are based on the linearized model, uh, no linear systems, right? You know, we use the Riccati differential equations and then using the Jacobian matrices, evaluated at the estimated state x, 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 x hat. So, um, you know, this is basically a first order approximation of nonlinear functions. So, um, yeah, you know, this particular part is basically um, <coughs> not the uh, really exact an approximation. So, you know, extended common filter is a nonlinear non filter. And then from this point, uh, we can't say this is the best, the optimum filter, because there's no proof for such a you know, case. Um, yeah, you know, so that's sad. However, um, yeah, this kind of uh, extended common filter being used quite successfully if you use it carefully, okay? But uh, it, it is known just a you know, few, a, um, you know, failure scenarios and, uh, you know, tends to happen. So one typical case is that extended common filter tends to underestimate the error covariance. It's some kind of, you know, um, you know, optimistic guy, okay, tends to underestimate the, its own error, you know, error covariance that will be, you know, um, underestimated, okay. So what happens if the error covariance is uh, underestimated, then uh, actually, uh, you know, um, you know, Kalman gain tends to be actually, uh, you know, small, right? You know, Kalman gain tends to be small. Uh, it leads to ins insufficient state uh, update. If, you know, state update is not uh, sufficient, then actually, uh, you know, um, error, the, uh, um, um, evaluating the Jacobian at the estimated state, but an estimated state is more departing from reality, you get the you know, inaccurate uh, F and uh, H over here, which is to uh, you know, produce the even worse in the P and then even worse, the Kalman gain K and so forth. So, so if this negative cycles continues, it is to, uh, you know, tends to blow up. Yeah, so sometimes the common, extended common filter doesn't converge, it doesn't provide the uh, right the state. So the, this is actually one uh, a known and a problem of uh, extended the common filter. This happens uh, particularly when the error, um, you know, covariance P uh, changes very quickly. That happens uh, when the system is highly nonlinear. So, um, then, then people try to find a better way of doing that. And the one is unscented Kalman filter. So let's go into that uh, before just taking a break. So unscented uh, you know, um, Kalman filter, which was originally developed by Julier and Arman, 1997, um, using the uh, you know, particular uh, clever method uh, you know, uh, for computing the error covariance method. They did not uh, use the, uh, just a standard uh, Riccati uh, equations, nor, you know, covariance of propagations and uh, update loads in the case of uh, discrete time. Instead, then they use a special technique, it's called the uh, unscented transform, okay? And, you know, this unscented transform is quite, uh, you know, uh, use uh, effective alternative to uh, an updating um, and estimating um, covariance or matrices. The key idea involved here is to use a particular um, sampling technique, a particular set of uh, sample points and called the uh, sigma points um, that actually you know, propagate uh, through uh, some nonlinear, original nonlinear model and uh, using some sampling uh, techniques, uh, these points uh, can provide better um, covariance uh, um, estimates. That's the key idea. So let's look at that. Um, so unscented transform. 
Uh, let's start with the uh, simple, you know, uh, 1D case, and then uh, later we uh, uh, extend it to a um, multi-axis, multi-variate uh, case. So that, let's actually you know, assume the one-dimensional random variable X having a Gaussian distribution, okay? So you know, in the case of Gaussian, this is the uh, you know, distribution, right? Uh, the density you know, uh, the function which is uh, completely characterized by just the two parameters. One is actually a mean and the other is a variance over here. So uh, distribution are like this. Okay. Now, uncentered to transform represented this Gaussian distribution with the three special sample points. And then they are called uh, the sigma points. One sample point is this, you know, uh, the mean value x tilde not zero. Uh, over here. And the two more samples are basically symmetric locations here, x1 and x2. And then away from this middle point by this much, square root of one plus a couple times sigma. Sigma is this you know, standard deviation. And a couple is a parameter to be determined, to be tuned on the data. But you know, we basically uh, use these three samples x to the not and one and two, you know, as defined uh, in here. Also, we, uh, you know, use the um, weights associated uh, with uh, each um, the sigma point. Um, for x not, we use uh, this weight, so copper over one plus copper. And uh, uh, two other sigma points here, basically they are symmetric, uh, you know, in with respect to the middle point, uh, they take the same weight, one over two times one plus copper. Okay, so we take uh, this uh, kind of sample point. So what is interesting is that instead of um, you know uh, representing uh, this one in this form or continuous you know con continuous uh, points, but uh, um, we represent it with just the three sample points as stated here. Okay, so you know one basic uh, um, characteristic uh, property of this uh, sigma point is the following. Okay, if you just uh, take the um, uh, mean of three sample points uh, here and here and here, that agrees with the you know um, this uh, original mean value, and we take the weighted sum of these samples, three samples in this case, zero, one, two. Um, and then, as you can see here, the uh, you know weight is basically we use uh, the you know you know zero samples uh, comes with this weight, and then uh, one and the two samples uh, comes with this you know weight. So uh, that I put in here uh, w zero w one, and you know uh, uh, number one and number two uh, samples uh, single points are given by this, oops, given by this, and they cancel out. So as you compute this, and regardless of the value of k, you know, it agrees with the uh, x bar, which is actually original, the mean value of here. Okay, um, you know, and variance is a little bit more interesting. If you just take the weighted um, sum of this squared error from uh, this you know, mean value, you know, it is expanded this way. Um, you know, you know, here you can just cancel this, and it turns out that this one too, you know, provides the same um, uh, variance as in the case of the original complete distribution. So weighted the, the sum and of the sigma points gives the uh, exact uh, mean value, and then weighted the sum of the squared error also gives the, um, you know, this correct uh, original, um, you know, uh, standard uh, deviations, excuse me, um, in the variance. Okay, so with this uh, property, what we would like to do is going to, yeah, uh, this um, key idea of uncentered transform. Okay, now we consider some nonlinear function, y of g of x. Okay, so this one is, you know, uh, you know, uncentered transform, it's not the, 
and you know, we're not actually dealing with the Kalman filter yet. So this is just a general function, nonlinear function y equals gx. Uh, this function is assumed to be analytic. Analytic means that uh, there's a, actually a, you know a Taylor expansion. Um, I know this kind of expression exists. Okay. Now distribution of y. I know if you look at the distribution of y, you know. Maybe this diagram will help you. Y equal GX is this curve. Okay, Y equal GX is this curve. And this is actually the X uh, distribution, which is assumed to be on the Gaussian. But once you um, transform X to Y uh, through this nonlinear functions, um, this distribution is no longer Gaussian, right? Um, because, you know, this side it's kind of, you know, slope is gentle. Uh, excuse me, this side the slope is very, you know, uh, um, gentle at this point, and then steep at this point, and uh, you know, on this side. So this is actually, you know, steep. You know, um, this one is more actually, you know, uh, extended. And then this very, very, very actually gentle means that uh, this um, area is basically compressed, complex, the, uh, compressed to uh, this the narrow area, so that this area is basically mapped to this, and also it shows this kind of a skewed uh, distribution. Okay, now interesting point uh, is that, uh, let's see, uh, if you just uh, take a naive uh, approach, uh, just to pick the um, mean value over here, and then uh, this mean value of x, x bar, is transformed to uh, this point, you arrive at this point, right? Hmm. Um, and then uh, if you just uh, estimate the mean of uh, the, this distribution by this value, that's not a good uh, evaluation. But in fact, uh, if you basically take the weighted, uh, weighted uh, you know, mean of transformed sample points, uh, basically sigma points one, zero, one, two, three um, sigma points, a sample of points, mapped to this, these three points. If you use the three points as a whole and then take the weighted sum of them, you get the better estimate for the true um, mean value of uh, you know, and y, EY. And then uh, uh, we can prove that the accuracy is actually uh, the third order so actually error is you know fourth order or higher small quantities likewise um if you represent the uh, variance um with respect to uh, um this uh sigma point transferred each actually sample point is uh, mapped to this and then and you look at the these sample points um you get the better actually better covariance than doing so in a uh, very simple way. Um, so and basically you know, take the, uh, the derivatives of the, you know, um, this function, the Jacobian, and actually use that uh, derivatives, the first order approximation derivatives to obtain the um, variance. That is not actually good uh, approximation, but I know uh, by taking the uh, three samples in this case, you get a better um, 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 estimate. Uh, accurate to the second order. Now, uh, you know, that relationship can be uh, proven. Um, it's a little bit in the dry uh, derivations, uh, needing, a, you know, two pages of uh, derivations. Um, but instead, you know, I like to demonstrate uh, how this one really works. So in this example, <clears throat> I look at the uh, very simple nonlinear functions almost uh, the two uh, no, I know, um, piecewise linear function, but in a connection, these two, uh, these two lines must be smooth. So I put the, some differentiable you know, um, connection between these two. Um, so consider a piecewise linear function for x as shown in the, in the figure, okay? Then actually, you know, uh, x is distributed uh, you know, um, as a Gaussian like this, right? And uh, so, you know, this nonlinear, uh, excuse me, um, you know, straight line, straight line, piecewise straight line um, curves 
can be actually uh, you know, uh, used for mapping this one from here to here and uh, here to here. It's basically, it comes down to extending uh, this part and uh, here and actually compressing uh, the, this side mapped to uh, this point. So this skewed ugly uh, distribution is the one uh, with respect to uh, y-axis, okay? So let's start with the uh, naive method which is our best, best get used extended common filter. So you pick the uh, mean point here, right? Mean value here. And uh, this one is mapped to uh, the, this point by just using uh, this nonlinear um, you know, uh, transformation, this, this one. So if you say the mean of this you know, y distribution is given by you know, uh, just uh, simply mapping the mean of this in x point to, you know, to this, you say that the y bar, which is actually mean of y, is g of x bar. Okay, this is a naive method. But in fact, if you look at the uh, this distribution, this distribution, you can say that uh, no, 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 no. The uh, true uh, mean value, which I write in this way, and y bar true is actually a definition of e of and y should be somewhere here, right down to this red line, right? You know. Uh, 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 the triangle um, and a red, red uh, mark over here. Okay, now, so let's actually look at the, uh, you know, this method, um, you know, unscented to transform. So we consider three sample points here and here and here, right? So that's actually, you know, uh, each mapped to, uh, you know, this Y domain through this nonlinear function. So this arrive at the C here, and then, you know, this arrived here, and then actually, you know, mean value arrives at this point. Okay, they are denoted Y1 tilde, Y2 tilde, in uh, response to uh, X1 tilde, X2 tilde over here. So now let's take the weighted sum of these three, uh, you know, sigma points in Y, and uh, they are given by this expression, right? So you know that the, uh, the you know since uh, this is the nonlinear transform uh, that we can actually you know and, you know write in this way. Um, so um, you know uh, this particular point uh, the y two is this red line which is actually y bar y bar minus uh, this much then delta two right and then and then this guy is y one bar plus this much you know uh, delta one so. I just uh, inserted this one into this, into this, and you know y bar. You remember that the you know, y bar actually you know um, uh, retains, so it comes out this way. And the delta one, the delta two shows up here. Okay. So obviously, from this diagram, we can say uh, delta two's magnitude uh, is bigger than the delta one, right? So, you know, delta two is bigger than the delta one. So that's actually, this one is smaller than Y bar. So Y bar samples created the, through this um, uncentered transform is to give a better estimate than, than this guy. And then actually estimate is a little lower than this Y bar. So, it, you know, getting closer to uh, Y true. So this is just, uh, you know, one demonstration. But I know um, you can see that uh, instead of just mapping the center point uh, to this point, you better use the multiple points, the sample points, okay? The each point is actually transformed through the original nonlinear function to the new domain, and then take uh, the sample means, the sample variance among these. That actually the uh, uncentered uh, transform. We can apply this to a multi-axis case. So, you know, um, if you have, uh, um, say, uh, you know, n uh, axis, um, you know, um, nth order um, set equations, um, um, you can actually uh, you know, consider um, uh, in a covariance matrix, so that's actually n by n, right? So if that's a case, we can actually, uh, you know, first to compute the, uh, the you know, eigen back, eigen um, value, and then eigen vector uh, pointing just like this. So this one is a unit the vector pointing in the directions 
of the uh, um, eigenvector associated with the uh, first uh, an eigenvalue, and uh, this one is V2. So, you know, we just discussed the uh, scalar case only along this one axis, and then we got the three um, uh, sigma points. But if you have uh, the two, um, you know, uh, degree to freedom system here, we add the two of them here. Um, in the case of uh, n axis, um, except for the center point, we have a pair of points um, at the symmetric locations with respect to the middle point. So two times uh, n uh, sigma points plus center points, so two n plus one uh, sigma points uh, can be defined by um, basically uh, computing the um, um, you know, eigenvalue and then eigenvectors of this covariance matrix Px over here. Okay, uh, remember that the covariance matrix Px is real and symmetric and positive definite, so um, it can be extended to um, on this form where a D is actually a diagonal matrix uh, having uh, all, you know, sigmas, uh, you know, like, like this uh, sigmas, and you know, V is, capital V is actually consisting of uh, unit eigenvectors coming from this matrix Px, and so there's also normal matrix, right? So using that, so we can write these sigma points in this way. So again, the x naught um, is actually the center point uh, x bar. And uh, you know, um, for each axis, i axis, we get the positive side and the negative side. Okay, we number first all positive side, this x1 tilde, x2 tilde. And then looking at the, uh, the this side, uh, after, you know, we go back to x1 plus n and, and so forth. So, so this is all plus side and this one to all negative side. You know, that's that the numbering x i plus n, okay? i varies from one to n. Um, associated, associated with these uh, uh, sigma points, uh, we consider uh, weight and that is given by this end, you know, copper over, um, N plus copper, and then W1 to uh, W and, and having the same uh, actually um, um, and the, and the weight over here. So, um, um, yeah, you know, this may be the last slide before break. So let's actually, uh, you know, consider the nonlinear transformations just as we did before, okay? So the function is y equals gx, which is actually an analytic function, okay? And then you know, uh, these are sigma points, x1 tilde, x2 tilde here, x tilde n plus one, x tilde n plus two, and this is the middle point, right? All of these points are basically transformed, transferred to an y domain through this nonlinear function. Okay, so this middle point is going to uh, somewhere at this point. Okay, this point is going to uh, this point. This point is going to uh, this point. Okay, so now, first of all, I know, um, well, and actually with this, uh, instead of just, you know, taking just the center points, transfer this, and then, you know, instead of saying that this is the actual mean value of the, you know, in the, of the Y um, distributed in the Y domain, Instead of taking this guy, you better take the weighted uh, sum of all of these uh, points which are individually transferred through uh, nonlinear functions, right? So this is that expression. You know, we say that the, uh, you know, um, yeah, the better estimate of the mean value is actually um, weighted the sum of all these uh, two n plus one points. And then this is denoted the y bar sample. Okay, this y bar samples uh, may be actually close to uh, this you know, true uh, mean, and uh, actually the order of accuracy is uh, basically a third order accuracy. The weighted covariance too, you know, we don't know the exact value, but uh, let's say that this is actually the mean, you know, mean value is replaced by this guy. So let's look at the uh, difference between this point and the individual um, other um, the sigma points and then compute the, the you know, covariance in this way. So, you know, y individual, you know, um, 
sigma points of y to the i, which is actually transformed through uh, this nonlinear function, minus uh, this in the middle point in here, y, y bar sample, and then take the uh, you know, covariance like this. We can show that the weighted the mean can approximate the true mean to the third order and the weighted the covariance to the second order. And this is called the unscented uh, transform. So uh, let me just stop um, at this point. Uh, let me just uh, take uh, your questions. Okay, um, Anubhav, it looks like uh, theoretically the choice of copper has no effect on unscented, yeah, 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 ability to approximate the variable and the mean. In practice, are there some reasons why specific values of copper might be uh, preferred? Great questions, uh, Anubhab. Yeah, that's great questions. Well, this, you know, copper is a kind of a bonus. And then for class of programs, if you take the copper you know, tuned to certain values, you can in fact, uh, you know, you know, increase increase the accuracy um, from third order to fourth order or second order to third order. So they use this copper for fine tuning the, you know, improving the you know, accuracy. But that's actually depending on the uh, program. So once a nonlinear function is given, that uh, sort of a uh, I know. Um, I know fine tuning uh, uh, can be applied. There's also a rule of thumbs or something, uh, you know, basic uh, um, guidelines of how you choose a copper. There are tons of papers you know, being published. I don't know that, uh, uh, you know, details, but I know there's some recommended value of copper for a class of programs. Okay, bridge. Um, is there any reason for calling this unscented? Uh, <laughs> yeah, do they mean that, that it is unbiased to our Gaussian <laughs> PDF again? Well, yeah, yeah, right, right. I, I think uh, this is the uh, you know arrogance of the in, inventors, you know, um, unscented the common filter, and they call the, all the other common filters, uh, you know, stink, stinky common filter. Um, but I, you know, usually unscented is used, to, you know, somewhat. Uh, you know, more, less biased, you know, yeah, you know, less biased. That's actually, you know, it's colored or less biased towards certain directions. Yeah, they use it, the means in, in that way. But, you know, um, in fact, uh, it, it is actually better um, estimation of the covariance. So in case uh, highly nonlinear systems, quickly you have to change the, you know, um, you know covariance, you know, um, distributions. Um, extended common filter cannot catch up with it, um, but I know this unscented common filter by taking this sampling techniques uh, that provide a better better one. So um, Charles, so can we think of unscented to transform instead of doing a linear approximation? Gaussian fit of the uncertainty. Yeah, you know, th this is to replace the um, uh, Jacobian based uh, linearization that's actually, you know, foundations of extended common filter uh, for the purpose of, um, you know, uh, covariance uh, uh, propagations uh, um, and update. So I know, you know, they, however, still Assume the distribution is, uh, you know, Gaussian, and every time uh, you make, uh, you know, some transitions, and uh, that forms a, a Gaussian is re actually fit, uh, fitted, the uh, real the data. So I'll, I'll, you know, go about this more later. But that's a basic idea. And also, I have to say that the unscented, you know, uh, you know, transform is uh, somewhat, uh, you know, interesting. Um, segue to uh, um, you know particle filters, and which basically uses the more you know sampling techniques, and uh, you know, more going to a Monte Carlo simulations to compute the otherwise very complex you know you know situations uh, which are highly nonlinear and uh, non-Gaussian distributions and so forth. 
So, you know, clean theory has been actually laid out in the last week. Um, but, I you know, going to a more real, you know, real world problem, you have to face you non know, realities and uh, sometimes the non Gaussian situations. And that actually we need to come up with the better, uh, more flexible, and useful um, techniques. And then, you know, main part is basically coming from sampling the techniques. So, this is just the first flavor for you how you can use the sampling techniques in, in doing this business more accurately. Okay, with that, uh, let's go back to uh, my slide. Um, so now with using uh, this, you know, um, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, formulate the uncentered comma filter. It's a little bit too complicated. Uh, uh, what time is it? Okay, so, um, I, I hope I can explain this well. So, so this, you know, we do this for actually, you know, discrete time case, uh, and then uh, we set the ut is of zero, it is not actually a major part, and we use these two equations, and then W and the V. We assume these two, you know, uh, noise um, uh, variables are to be normally distributed, and then you know, uncorrelated, and the mean zero, and the variance um, is actually a matrix RT and then QT. Okay, and we start with the time T minus one. And you know, uh, we already know a, a posteriori estimate the XT minus one hat, and then a, a posteriori uh, error covariance, you know, PT minus one. Okay, uh, given this, uh, the problem is to find a recursive formula using the uncentered transform on how we can actually, uh, you know, um, um, propagate and uh, um, propagate the state, uh, you know, uh, from um, xt hat, x, xt minus one hat to xt slash t minus one, you know, hat. And actually, uh, um, you know, a posteriori uh, uh, covariance p t minus one, um, you know, move to uh, p t t minus one. We have to um, predict this, right? Um, and also, we have to do a state uh, uh, update and then a covariance update. So basically, exactly the same as in the case of uh, you know, uh, discrete common filter, uh, what we need to do, uh, and actually obtaining this formula, um, update and uh, um, propagations of state and uh, you know, error covariance. However, we want to do so by using sampling basically um, 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 you know sigma points are to be used okay so um, propagation of state okay um, so you know you know we we are given the PT minus one right you know a posteriori um, um, error covariance at the time T minus one given this so for this we compute the uh, eigenvalues and then eigenvectors and actually uh, uh, determine two n plus one sigma points. Okay, so um, this diagram is familiar, right? So we we as you know um, we see that in you know, x b one and v two v one direction we have uh, you know this sample points and then plus n to this is actually you know minus side of uh, sigma points along with the uh, center points, right? Now, we propagate the sigma point through the uh, state equation, which is nonlinear, right? So, you know, the center point, you know, y bar g x bar arrive at this point, and then this point arrive at this point. Now it is denoted uh, as x sub t t minus one upper, um, you know, one star, okay? Um, I don't have to use a star, but I know uh, this is to represent the, uh, this as actually sample points and the sigma points, and actually it is uh, a, you know trans uh, transformed through the nonlinear function state equations going to this point. We do this for all the two n plus one points. Okay, and you know we found a better mean value. Well, this is not actually you know one single point uh, mapped to this point. No, we take the you know weighted the uh, sum of these uh, sample points to n plus one points as given by this equation. And this particular you know mean 
you know, point, estimated the mean point, is um, denoted x t t minus one hat sample. Okay, it's based on based on the sample. Okay, now um, uh, in the same way, um, you know, um, a, a priori error covariance that can be computed, uh, um, you know, based on this actually uh, transform. So you know, this is the original definition, right? So this is you know, a priori uh, before assimilating a new you know measurement. You know this is the um, a priori error, and then take the back to back, and then expanding, you get the uh, you know xt is expanding to uh, this nonlinear and deterministic terms, and actually you process noise. So now as you expand this, and you should not forget the w w uh, back to back. Uh, it basically gives you the uh, uh, Process noise uh, error, uh, process noise covariance Q T minus one comes up from here. Uh, other cross terms, cross terms W versus X is basically you know not a correlated zero. Okay, excuse me. So um, yeah, you know so um, you know exactly uh, this particular you know value is not known since we do not know the exact state uh, x t minus one however it is approximated to the third order with the weighted mean so this is the one that we obtained last, you know, in the previous slide okay so we replace uh, this guy this guy by x t t minus one sample okay so these are the points you know uh, you know, we take expectation by means of taking the, um, you know, weighted average of this product, right? So, you know, these are, you know, those points, uh, you know, so did I put the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, x1, the t, t, t minus 1, you know, so minus this, did I use a star over here? Maybe I'm missing here, but I, know, I, I hope you can, um, and this is consistent with this diagram. So you can do that, right? So taking these uh, samples, and uh, this is the, you know, um, ground truth, uh, the best estimate of the, uh, you know, center point. So we basically uh, take the uh, difference between the, those points and so uh, to compute the variance of this one. Don't forget to put this one. So this is our, you know, kind of an estimated uh, um, a priori error covariance based on the uh, samples, okay? Uh, please note that the predicted covariance is correct up to the second order, okay? Um, now, um, let's move on. So the next one is we need to obtain the Kalman gain, okay? Kalman gain, you know, what you know in the discrete Kalman filter is this expression, right? Okay, the optimal um, Kalman gain is given by this. Um, first of all, you know, this terms, you know, this one, uh, perhaps uh, you remember this or not, that we discussed it the last uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, last week. Uh, and this guy is basically innovation covariance. So that's actually called the innovation, you know, uh, covariance. The also, the one issue with this is that uh, this includes the linearized uh, output uh, the function matrix H is involved, which is not available at this point. We don't want to use that the Jacobian, so H is not available. We don't want to use H. So we need to come up with the, you know, uh, different uh, expression that is to give the common gain. So first of all, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, let's prove that this formula, this is actually, you know, equivalent and to this one, but actually in a different form of Kalman gain, KT. It's P sub XY and the PY inverse. Okay, PY is the innovation covariance, which we defined last time. That's basically output side of uh, the covariance, right? You know, so this is a predicted uh, the Y output, and this is the measured Y, right? So we can actually define, by pressing this back to back, we can define the covariance of the output. Uh, and then that is called the innovation covariance. Okay, and then we did prove that this guy is basically sitting here. You know, this guy is actually equivalent to this. 
the also we uh, take the uh, input output uh, um, covariance so um, not input the state x and then output y which is a phrase in this way and then this one is a cross and you know, a covariance now let's actually uh, you know prove that uh, you know um, this py is basically inside of this and this pxy is this guy and we did the proof of the you know, py side you know the last time so this is just you know a rehash of that you know uh, this is definitions of py and then expanding this and then the cross term is zero and so you end up with the, this particular part of um you know um inner covariance and this uh um you know you know you know observation um inner covariance is shown here that's rt right so this one has been proven and uh, this this side is easy actually this is just a uh, definition so putting this and then bt does not uh, correlate with this so that's gone so the remaining part is basically i know that this part and then that is nothing but the, this one is a priori um you know uh estimation error covariance so just a ptt minus one and then the multiply this and then this is to agree with the um you know this part of common gain therefore common gain can be computed this way why this is a this is useful because this doesn't have a h matrix also this one can be you know expanded this way so these actually uh, you know um expressions provide us with the way of estimating this through uh, sigma samples uh sigma points okay so with that uh, you know, state update it can be computed this way so in doing this you know once again now um uh, through the previous step we have obtained um pt t minus one samples right so this uh this is actually propagation of the um error covariance right uh, you know uh you know do you want to check it uh, th th this is the one uh we obtained okay so um from the uh, you know um by you know um computing the eigenvalue and an eigenvector of a you know covariance matrix uh, p t minus one we obtained these sample points single points and we you know is single points are uh, transferred to uh this you know uh, space through uh, state of transition equations right using that uh, we computed this guy ptt minus one sample okay so um you know now we have this one so once again we compute the eigenvalue and an eigenvector of this estimated uh, a priori um you know error covariance ptt minus one sample Okay, so suppose that one actually is slightly different the notation tt minus one here, here, and then a two n plus one samples uh, actually you know obtained here, right? So first at this point uh, we have to actually um, create the predicted output. First predicted the output. So in doing so, uh, not not only just a transfer, uh, the this mean value you know x t t minus one and the mean value to this point which may not be a uh, uh, good uh, you know mean value here but instead uh, we uh, transform each um, sigma point to an additional two n uh, sigma points uh, transferred to this point through output nonlinear function output nonlinear functions and we take the summations you know um weighted sum of these points so that's actually this guy yt sample okay yt sample once you take this then uh, you can actually uh, compute this remember that one that this is actually our end result and you know let's see look at this you know we do not know exact hxt however our best uh, estimate of this guy is yt sample you know yt sample and uh, actually i you know um i know um you know other sample points sitting here and here and here is actually evaluated uh the difference from this and you know, yt sample this is the best estimate 
and you know taking this you know back to back uh, we can compute this i know a uh, py don't forget to put the rt that comes from this right so similarly cross variance uh, covariance uh, can be computed you know with uh, respect to you know this you know times this product right and that is to give the pxy so by putting together these two py i know innovation um covariance and the cross covariance pxy pxy we can write kalman gain we can obtain a common gain in this way once you know the common gain you can actually update the state so this is the you know state uh, you update okay now it's uh, almost there but i know don't forget that the uh, the next round, uh, you, know, you need to know the updated uh, um, PT that is, um, you know, a posteriori um, and a covariance. After you compute this in the next round, you have to uh, start with the, the this, you know, matrix again. So we need to update this from uh, PT minus one to uh, PT T minus one sample to this guy. So now we use, uh, you know, uh, again, the PY, you know, that's a uh, innovation on the covariance. And this, what time is it? Innovation covariance, uh, we can rewrite them slightly. So you, you remember that the uh, update uh, the law of uh, error covariance, PT minus one to PT is actually given by this expression. Remember that, right? So in PT, T minus one is uh, you know, usually the bigger than the PT. It is actually attenuated by this much, you know, I minus KT HT is slightly smaller than I. So this one becomes smaller, remember that. So let's actually distribute the PT T minus one to uh, these two terms obtained here. And here we make a uh, one trick. Let's insert the PY, PY inverse, that's I, so, you know, inserting this it's basically no change so i just insert between these k and the h putting it here but you know look look this py inverse hd ptt minus one remember that the kalman gain kt as obtained by ptt minus one ht transpose the py inverse right so this you know, py is an innovation covariance right so we just obtained this so let's replace this one by this. So you end up with this expression. Now, what's actually uh, you know, um, you know, you know, point? Because this expression doesn't include the you know Jacobian H. That is actually uh, you know the Jacobian uh, first order Taylor uh, approx expansion approximation that's no longer involved in this expression. So using this, we can update, you know, um, uh, you know, P. So this is the end result. And you know, this one, uh, you know, of course, in previous uh, step, uh, we um, estimated by using the signal points. So that's actually PTT minus one sample, right? And uh, we have already obtained the Kahneman gains uh, using that, uh, you know, samples too. And the PY too is basically an innovation that we can compute uh, based on the samples. So, you know, just uh, subtracting this, so we can actually, you know, update PT. That's all about the, the recursive uh, algorithms of uh, unscented Kalman filter. So there are the two rounds of uh, taking the, uh, um, um, you know, sigma points. So it's a little bit uh, complicated. Starting with the, um, you know, previous round at the time T go to T minus one, um, you know, uh, a posteriori uh, state, you know, x t minus one hat and p t minus one. Uh, we immediately take the eigenvalue and eigenvectors of this p t minus one. Uh, take these, you know, um, you know, sigma points to two n plus one sigma points, and propagate all the sigma points through nonlinear model to uh, obtain this, you know, um, transformed. Um, you know, state, basically this is the propagations of individual sample points to this point. And then uh, we take the, uh, you know, weighted the sum, also weighted uh, the covariance, uh, you know, based on these samples, okay? Well, and note that the, the, this one is used uh, in the mean value over here, 
because we don't know the exact mean value, but I know this will be a you know, good uh, estimate of that. Okay. Um, so once we uh, you know, get the uh, propagated uh, PT, T minus one, we uh, and take the um, sigma point once again uh, for this PT, T minus one by taking its eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors. With that, uh, next we, just as we did, uh, you know, um, um, in the standard Kalman filter, we first uh, uh, you know, create the estimated, uh, estimated, you know, uh, output, right? Before taking the, uh, you know, update, before taking the, uh, you know, samples, uh, excuse me, actual the sensor measurements, excuse me. So, and the way we do it is that, uh, you know, by taking, a, um, you know, sigma points based on this covariance matrix and the two n plus one, and each point is actually transferred, uh, you know, to y t and I, and then we take the weighted the sum. Um, you know, here it's individually and you know moved uh, through this equations. Okay, so uh, once we have a y t, you know, and what you can do is basically, you know, um, compute the Kalman gain by this you know, expression cross, um, you know, uh, you know, you know covariance and uh, innovation covariance, and each can be computed in this way, right? Each computed this way by using all samples. Then we can get the uh, Kalman gain. Once you have a Kalman gain, we get the uh, you know, update of state by assimilating a new uh, sensor data. Uh, you know, we evaluate this error and then multiply the uh, Kalman gain to this and to uh, um, um, update this um, propagated uh, state to, uh, to get the XT. At the same time, don't forget to uh, update the uh, um, you know, PT based on this expression. And then the time is set to T plus one and then repeat the uh, process, okay? So, you know, in these uh, you know, derivation, no Jacobian, no partial derivatives are needed, which is good things. The estimated covariance using a sigma points is more accurate than the Jacobian based ones. So what it does is basically like this. So originally, you know, uh, we assumed the Jacobian, excuse me, um, Gaussian distribution like this. Going through a nonlinear map, you know, this one it becomes very much skewed like this, right? This is the real distribution, so maybe, you know, quite, uh, you know, distorted. But I you know what the Ansante de Kalman filter does is to best approximate this one as a Gaussian, um, you know, distributions and use this guide for the next round. And the, the, this, uh, this way of estimating the uh, distributions is actually much more accurate than the uh, extended common filter where it is to use a pointwise information for linearizing it. But here's a caveat. The distribution of random variables after transformed through a nonlinear equations like a F, X and HX, it turns out to be uh, no longer the Gaussian, right? Although the original distribution was Gaussian, it is actually deformed like this. And then the common filter approximated this distribution to a Gaussian and they capitalized it uh, with the uh, mean and the covariance. Although this approximation is accurate, you know, to the second order at least, but the discrepancy, you know, from the a, a, a complete Gaussian may grow as this process is repeated. So that's actually, you know, one caveat uh, you have to take into account. So, um, um, yeah, you know, uh, extended common filter, you know, tends to underestimate the covariance of PT and, uh, the, you know, um, yeah, that actually shows some kind of, you know, failure scenario, but I know uh, extended common filter is a better improvement to this. This diagram is a very famous diagram. Um, when you uh, learn something about the uh, center of the common filter, they shows this. Um, some point clouds here, they mapped to uh, this one, which is not the Gaussian distribution. This is actually, if you take the uh, you know, you know, covariance uh, and then you know, estimate, actually mean value, the true value here and true value here. But you know, um, yeah, you know, if we use a, a linearized version, extended common filter, you get the actually, you know, um, you know worse, uh, you know, data. Um, but, you know, uh, sigma points, um, 
uh, unscented uh, the transform that gives you a better one. So th that's a story about uh, uh, this um, unscented common filter. So let me check. Uh, um, I think it's a too quick uh, uh, bridge. Seems like uh, as we go to more advanced common filter, computational cost increases. Do you have a recommendation for which of these would be well suited for nonlinear real-time estimation implementation for high bandwidth control application? Discussion of the trade-offs from your perspective would be helpful. Yeah, okay, of course. So, you know, computational load is one of the key issues, right? And then actually, you know, uh, we, um, um, I know, in, in fact, uh, some said, actually this depends on the program, some says that the computation of Jacobian 2 takes more time. Um, and some sample missed uh, the point, uh, you know, um, computation, sampling the best ones is more efficient. As far as, you know, uh, computer implementation is concerned. Uh, so, um, yeah, you know, um, yeah, uh, we end up with the, uh, um, you know, particle filters for which there are tons of uh, actually effective implementation techniques and being developed, right? So beyond this point is a uh, highly, you know, depends on the uh, you know, specific properties of the plant. But I know this unscented common filter, as far as the noise distribution is more or less, um, you know, the, you know, Gaussian, uh, this method uh, it really works, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, let me show you one, you know, one thing. Um, yeah, you know, next uh, um, context-oriented uh, um, project uh, is basically, uh, you know, a navigation program, vehicle navigation program, okay? So th this is the last year of the statement. I I'm gonna change this in some way. But, uh, you know, um, and then you try out the different uh, method, like extended common filter and uncentered common filter. Particularly interesting here is that, you know, suppose this vehicle is, is deployed to a uh, you know, busy place, like uh, airport uh, concourse and uh, airport you know, or train stations. Uh, actually, this is shown in somewhere in the Tokyo's, you know, um, in the train stations. Suppose this, uh, you know, robot, you know, is uh, deployed here. First the job is that it has to walk uh, uh, safely through this you know, high traffic, right? So the robot has to actually you know, uh, look at the people surround, surrounding and then the uh, uh, robot has to um, estimate where the individual passengers are walking you know, this way and that way, right? And then it uses the, uh, um, the LiDAR sitting here Right, and then that is basically you know polar coordinate, right? So interestingly, you know this is a case of when not so much you know uh, difficult, but I know one uh, the passenger is uh, going towards this, okay, and then actually uh, you know maybe young men like you uh, and passing through this robot, you know, <laughs> and then seeing this from this point, this actual origin is a singular point of the polar coordinate. And if the you know passengers are going through this very you know narrow near miss situation going this, imagine that the, how much covariance uh, matrix uh, varies through this process. It is to change quite drastically, and this is one of the scenario that uh, you know standard extended common filter loses the tracking, so um, it it diverges. So in case it has a kind of sharp and you know, nonlinearity. Um, it is a problem. Otherwise, an extended common filter works well. But I know uh, some situations like that, I know uncertain common filter is needed. So, so you look at this problem, and uh, uh, you know, and at the end uh, you have some you know, uh, you know, slam problem like this, and so you have to go through unknown environment. Um, you know, based on the, your you know the sensor uh, the data, and it's all you know common filter problem. So that, that's a problem you want to look at the next the next time. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? You know, the last part is a little, you know, quick. Uh, and um, you know, even though I, uh, you know, spoke slowly, it's very confusing. But a uh, key point is that you know, let's take samples. 
and then the sample point, individual points can be transformed using the exact nonlinear equations. If you, you know, know that nonlinear equations, and um, you know, mapped to the you know, you know next point, distributed in a kind of weird way, but I know that is to give the better representation of the distributions. Compared to uh, you know, um, um, you know. Um, particle filter that you learn, yeah, this method is to use the fewest number of uh, sample points. Well, of course, as you have more sample points, you get the better representations of the you know, distributions. But uh, you know, as Raj asked, uh, um, you know, Bridge asked, uh, you know, more computational efforts involved, right? So you know, if you know that the uh, uh, distribution can be well approximated by and the Gaussian distributions, you can actually do some clever job like this. Just a single point will be good enough. And then that's actually two n plus one. So even though you deal with the 10 dimensional space, you know, 21 sample points are you know, kept a track of. Okay, so then nothing else. Um, and all other methods of which can deal with the non Gaussian distributions needing millions of at least a thousands of the sample points and all actually you know uh, involved so compared to that this one is much much quicker uh, and then you know using the sample points okay any other um, questions is this okay um, so we're really going the deep into uh, in a more advanced Kalman filter okay so uh, this uh, Wednesday we look at the uh, um, you know, base filters, uh, and then the next, next week uh, we go into, uh, you know, um, yeah, particle filters and uh, SLAM, that's actually, uh, you know, uh, self-driving car technologies and those things are used. And then uh, this Friday, uh, we released the project number three, and I hope you can actually well, you know, prepare the before the uh, study group meetings uh, so that the more people are engaged and then, you know, discussing things. Uh, in a more exciting way. Okay, with that, that's all for today. Okay, take care. Bye.